The new event, the monobop, I always wondered why women didn't have a four woman event. And I assume it's, and I've read this a little, but that it's due to simply because there's not enough countries that can field four person sleds or enough of them. But the monobop, can you explain why that was introduced and what it means for the sport? Yeah. And I think the story behind monobob is kind of came from two different directions at the same time. And it kind of worked out that way. But yeah, one of them was up until well, up until these uh, last Olympics, men had two men and four men, women only had two women bobsled. Mm. And so, you know, that's obviously a discrepancy. So they tried for a while to, uh, to introduce four women uh, bobsledding. And for, you know, initial steps, they tried, you know, mixed gender sledding, you know, with female pilots and yep. you know, to try to get it up off the ground. But it was kind of looking like the United States, Germany, and basically Canada were going to dominate this, the sport. The they usual. had you know, a little bit yeah. of funding. They had better athletes. So a lot of smaller countries or less competitive countries, they didn't see the uh, the reason to put forth funding if they're not going to be in medal contention. They decided to almost work backwards. Instead of four women bobsled, they'd go with mono uh, bobsled. At the same time, uh, the adaptive sports. So you know we're not calling them Paralympic sports just yet because they're because bobsled and skeleton are not in the Paralympics. Yeah, you know, there's uh, there's always a movement to try to get them in, but okay. adaptive sledding was trying to develop, and you know, for safety reasons, there's a lot of complexity that goes into you know those rules. You know, how do you make a fair two man sled race? You know, if if one athlete you know is an amputee below the knee and another amputee is you know Great missing point. an arm or something, yeah, you know, so they decided to take the same route with monobob. Well, now at least you can. Uh, regulate to some degree, you can eliminate uh, some of those variables a little bit. So, so yeah, both uh, adaptive bobsled, Paralympic bobsled, as well as uh, women now have monobob. And it's a, it's a sled that the country doesn't develop. It's a, it's a, they all use the same sled. So it kind of evens the playing field. Now it's straight up, like who can push and who can drive. And yeah. that was an, yeah. another uh, thing that they said, if we're going to do monobob, let's regulate the sleds so that's uh, technology, at least the funding that goes into technology isn't as huge. So again, these smaller countries can participate. So the sleds all have the exact same body. Um, we can change, you know, some things with the steering uh, as well as the, uh, the runners that we use. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the most part, the sleds are the same. So again, now these smaller countries, and it's going to be seen coming up here in Beijing, there's going to be countries, um, well, for example, in the, the race most recently in, in Lake Placid, uh, Vietnam had a, a sled. And, you know, China's got a couple, of course, and, um, you know, Nigeria and Brazil and Jamaica, you know, countries that you would never think would be bobsledding. They can now have a team and, and almost hopefully be competitive as well. That's great. It's going to yeah. likely grow the sport. And um, I hope it helps. I'm excited to see. I know uh, Alana. Uh, did well in it. And uh, can you uh, talk about her a little bit? Obviously, she's been very productive in the Olympic Games, um, two silver, one bronze. Can you explain her as an athlete and, 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 and how she supported the program so well? Yeah, she's, uh, she's one of the few athletes that are still com uh, competing that I overlapped with a little bit. So I know her not only in the role that I'm in now, but also, again, as, as a teammate for a while too. And you know, back in the mid 2000s, all the way through, you know, 2021 and into 2022 here, uh, you know, she's incredibly strong, incredibly fast and a competitive nature that uh, it makes it perfect for bobsled. You know, she spends countless hours trying to understand and learn from mistakes, um, as well as, you know, do all the little things that it takes to take care of her body and recovery and that sort of thing, which is saying a lot because, you know, in the last uh, year or so, she became a mother too. Exactly. And so she's uh, got a lot on her plate. She balances life and sport um, as best, as, as good as anybody I've ever met. And, and this is Alana Myers Taylor. I know her as Alana Myers. And as she was young, this is before she's won three medals when we got to work with her. And she's just so funny and nice and positive attitude. And the few times I've caught up with her, I think that same day at the USA house, it was just so good to see her in her glory having done well. And it's like, man, you know, for me, it's, it's, you know, really happy when I see you guys succeed at what you're trying to do. A lot of the medical staff, we have no control over 
any of the performance other than being present, supporting you guys and uh, doing the best we can. But um, she's someone that, you know, I always have great memories of and for, and, and I'm happy she's done well. So you have a woman from the Canadian born, she was Canadian born coming to, she's been on the US team for a while and she just got her citizenship. I've never met her. Is it Callie or? Kaylee. Kaylee Humphreys. So she's, she's known for winning. She's really good. Can you yep. um, explain that situation a little bit so people are more aware? Yeah, uh, Kaylee, uh, she was an alternate for the 2006 Olympics as a push athlete. And so she's been around a long time as a great pusher. Uh, started driving right after that and raced with Canada for uh, a couple Olympics, uh, mm -hmm. actually. And, uh, and, you know, she's won gold medals and she's won world championships and all kinds of things. Uh, she's married now to an American. And, uh, and so part of her becoming an American citizen was now she, you know, she liked to compete, you know, and call her home the United States. And so we did uh, as much as we could and, and try to support her, you know, as, as any American born uh, athlete would, you know, and she's, uh, you know, part of our team and we're really you know glad she's a part and not just because she wins, but because, you know, she's a, a great person, a great leader. You know, she just brings the program up to another level just by, by being around so many other athletes. She can help, uh, help lead, but she also competes still at a high level, I assume, right? Yeah. 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 She's the defending world champion now in both two men and or two women and, and monobob too. Okay. And so we have high expectations for, for both her and Alana uh, coming into to Beijing. That's awesome. That's so cool. 